if you want to have a look at this game uh, is the hearing okay um, so Fisher was black here let's flip the board and um, so William Lombardi uh, tried a Meroxy bind so F3 and now C4 looks a bit strange actually C4 here uh, so early um, okay so E6 and now Fisher played Bishop E7 so we got Meroxy bind but an early quick d5. What does this remind you guys of? It reminds me of the Kasparov Sicilian Gambit. Uh, when Kasparov played this quick d5 against Karpov. What do you think about that? Wow. Um, this quick d5, guys. Wow. Pawn sack. Kasparov Gambit. So Queen c7. Okay, it's a bit different. So he's a pawn down, but he's got loads of uh, compensation pressure. Immediate threat, knight d4. Whoa! Oh, he's just one. He's just one material. Has he? Check. So blacks the exchange up. Okay. And then it was a matter of technique. <laughs> Let's go on to another game. <laughs> That was terrible, wasn't it? Sorry, uh, I don't know. Is the rest of the game technique? He's the exchange up. Um, he just takes off a few bits and he's the exchange up. He just gets a blockade. Uh, sacrifices to get a winning king and pawn ending. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm just taking a mickey. I've, I've been through the game too quick. I just wanted to get a quick game. Um, sorry, it was it was started like this. Sorry, let's go slowly. So Lombardi played a f3. Um, and and then followed up here, believe it or not, with c4. Uh, sorry, sorry, Mr. Nee, you st you're still with us. Have I put you off totally? Uh, I, I just wanted to get a quick gist of uh, what was going on. Uh, have I, oh, we've lost Mr. N oh dear. Um, I, maybe I should have played through the game uh, beforehand. So I just wanted to see if there was anything interesting after that. But he seemed to win the exchange quite quickly in this game through this early d5 here uh, so um, he plays e6 um, but he's not gonna like leave this flexible pawn structure here uh, for very long uh, so white played knight c3 is, is this this is a much better pace isn't it um, so th this is okay isn't it Miston? You're you're okay with this pace yeah Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. I, I was just, I, I was, I was just trying to get a gist myself. You know, quick. So bishop e7 was played again, as if black wasn't going to play for d5 or e5. And now, um, you know, Fisher castled. And then, so maybe a white safest move is bishop e2. Uh, do you think bishop e2 and then castle? But he wasted another move with knight c2, and now it's like Fisher lashed out in the center sacrificing a pawn with uh, the move d5 so this creates an explosion of peace activity like this bishop the center the king's still in the center um, so the Meroxy bind is is when there's a pawn on c4 and e4 and the bind is like to stop black from playing d5 are, are you all aware of that? That's the Meroxy bind. There was this player called Meroxy, um, who I'm not sure how often he employed his own Meroxy bind, but it was named after him. Meroxy, yeah. Um, so this bind is on d5 usually with these two pawns. So d5 breaks the bind kind of very quickly. Um, threatens to give white an isolated pawn because it takes, takes, that would be an isolated e pawn. So white snatches a pawn and it seems okay for a moment. But instead of queen takes now, bishop played queen c7. So what's the threat of queen c7? There's probably numerous threats. It's probably very dangerous for white now. Because you can imagine if he puts his queen back 
Uh, it's going to be harassed very soon with rook d8 if he puts it on the d file. Uh, for example, you know, say you know queen d2. I think this is too much, personally. There's too much pressure here. Maybe just knight b4, and that's vicious, isn't it? It's really vicious. The king is stranded in the center. So um, th this this is a lot of pressure here after queen c7. So um, do you think you know White's in big trouble here? He played actually uh, queen b5. So how does Fisher generate uh, play here? If White's given enough time, then he'll play bishop e2 and castle, right? So again, I suppose White played inaccurately. After bishop d7, White played rook c1. I guess he's neglecting this bishop and the rook. So Fisher a pawn down. He's broken the bind very quickly, and he pounces like a tiger now. <laughs> I'm reading you a bedtime story. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, there. Oh, this is a free version of live stream. Sorry, are you, are you um? After that, though, you should be able to watch it, shouldn't you? There's a 20 second advert or something, and then you should be able to follow the live stream. Is that right? Um, so Fisher pounces like a tiger, but isn't I don't know if um. Was Lombardi really uh, asleep during this game? No, uh, he missed this move night before then. All right, I think you need to close the window after that. Um, but this rook seems to be protected by this uh, bishop, don't you think? It's protecting the rook. So how is this pin working? Is, is that one mystery of this game, uh, would you say, um, to kind of explore? Yeah, but it looks as though knight b4 wasn't possible. Is is that right? <laughs> so how is this working? Oh, it's working because the bishop's attacking the queen. So actually Fisher's planned this horrible move. Queen takes c1 check, just winning the exchange because he's taking back uh, first the knight and then the bishop. So that's kind of funny. Two checks. Do it. Oh, sorry, no, he doesn't play check. No, because queen takes b4. <laughs> he has to take the queen there. <laughs> and uh, the knight's in pre, so the knight moves. But now he's the exchange um, up. End of game. So next Fisher game, yeah? <laughs> so that was clear enough. So look, there was the Maroxy bind. Yeah, we're, we're all clear on this game, aren't we now? Dead clear, everyone? Dead clear, 1960 game. Look, he broke the bind. Because White played knight c2, bang, d5. Yeah, end of game. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking at the live stream chat. Sorry, I'll, I'll just say, I'll be looking at the live stream chat only. Um, okay. So are, are we all clear on this game? Are we ready to go to another Sicilian defense game? There's not much substance to this game, is there? Yeah, it seemed to be you know some some sharp tactics from Fisher, but it wasn't amazingly amazing, was it? Knight B four. Oh, you you want to check Rook C one then? Okay. All right. So if he did, how was the way to consolidate then? Even in this position. All right. Let's have a look. So instead of Rook C one, what does the engine say here? Instead of Rook C one, just Castle Queen side. Actually, it's funny you should say that because, yeah, so some of these top bullet players I sometimes sack a pawn and then they castle queenside and manage to win later just about sometimes uh, so what would black's best be here is knight b4 dangerous what, what happens after knight b4 here isn't that really uh, isn't that really dangerous or is there queen c4 like is it queen c4 here is that possible? I wonder. What's what's the best move? Um, it's knight b4 here, isn't it? So it's still an advantage for black after knight b4. Yeah? 
Uh, are we all agreed? <laughs> Sorry, what's the best move here for black guys? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just guessing. Look, I haven't got an engine here. Look, look just tell me, please. Someone? <laughs> Is it night before? Uh, okay, okay, all right. Who's got an engine? Checking this position. We need an engine consultant. Who's checking this position? Anyone? <laughs> all right, all right. I, I'm just assuming um, something about this. Is it, actually, knight d4 is pretty um, looking dangerous as well. Or just rook c8 or anything. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to... Actually, I'll put your chat, guys. I'll put this chat window as part of the... Um, no, I can't. Um, no, forget that. Um, I'll just I'll just try and talk about your chat so we've got a video after. Okay, let, let's look at another game. I'm 